Oh, good morning, Fred. How about some coffee? Earl's so tired. <laughs> oh, uh, let's look at this really fast. Some, uh, this is from Coyote. You can tell it's a coyote because it has a large amount of uh, hair and bone in, in the scat. Uh, oh, I was going to tell you when I first started uh, referring to myself uh, in the third person. Uh, it happened at work and uh, there's often a lot of complaints at work. And, uh, and sometimes it's like, if you just don't say anything, nothing's going to change. But I don't like to complain. Um, but it, it occurred to me, like, if I saw somebody else uh, experiencing some difficulty, I would mention, I'd say, hey, can, uh, can we get some help over there? It looks like they've got uh, a chemical spill they need to clean up, and uh, I don't think they have all the equipment. Uh, instead, I'd be, uh, hey, can, can, uh, can Earl get a second thing of safety equipment over there? I mean, he's going to have to clean that whole spill up himself, and I don't think uh, there's been any kind of preparation or even backup for him. People are like, what, what, Earl's doing over, you're, or, or, oh. I mean, like, can, can, is someone going to give Earl his break? Or are we just going to work him until he drops? People are like, is Earl? So, yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, that's the thing. You get positive reinforcement for something, you know. So, not only do you get to complain, but it's kind of hilarious because there's that momentary confusion. Because it sounds like I'm talking about somebody else. And I do work with other Earls, so, uh. They, they do actually look to see if I'm referring to another Earl. <laughs> uh, and so at work, uh, my title's technician, um, but I, it's an entry-level job. I didn't get any kind of training. As the, the, my training actually is just becoming familiar with the equipment, and most of the equipment is cleaning equipment. So it's basically I'm a janitor. So I work with the, uh, the Bonobos Rails uh, installations. Which I know that you do, uh, uh, I think, in uh, the United Kingdom, it's, uh, they do centers. Uh, and they uh, convert farms and whatnot to, to Bonobos uh, care facilities, uh, the, the happiness units. Um, we have such a shifting population here that uh, that's how it started. Until, uh, until the cost got to the point where they're like, if we had a rail system... Um, between uh, three major cities, and three major cities could share the cost off that. So essentially we'd get this giant rail system um, and only have to pay for a third of it. Uh, we could actually shift uh, Bonobos uh, population centers uh, around as, as, uh, as necessary, as needed. Um, so there was, uh, there was flooding along the Columbia and the Willamette, and uh, you know, we were able to shift uh, Bonobos... Uh, centers, which essentially they're like, uh, they're like trains, except they kind of look like, uh, they kind of look like underground ocean going vessels. I mean, they look like, uh, look like, uh, those cargo container, uh, ships. Uh, they're huge. And so, uh, they would come, uh, through under, underneath the ground in the rail system and they'd go, uh, underneath the hills and they'd arrive, uh, along river populations. And that's the thing, because it used to be that they would be in, uh, like, for emergencies like that, they'd be in big carnival tents, which I always thought, like, I mean, the reason, I mean, if for you, those of you that don't know the Bonobos uh, um, uh, factoring in the, the happiness for the sentient population, um, uh, it, essentially, it's uh, a place that's experiencing a happiness uh, where the unhappiness level of sentient beings drops below uh, a certain point of an acceptable level. Um, it's... Uh, it's permissible uh, to bring in other sentient beings, uh, and in this case, uh, bonobos. Uh, they're like uh, they're like monkeys. They're like they're like big they're like big sex machine monkeys. <laughs> That's what they are. Um, and so they move in a large population of them, and they used to do it in tents. And you wouldn't be able to see the tents. It looked like a circus. The idea was to raise the happiness level of the area. Like they're sentient beings. They're entertained and cared for. Uh, and they have a known uh, level of happiness, and so if you insert that into a community, its happiness level is dropped because of the flooding. Uh, that level raises up by however many bonobos you could get in there. Uh, and I always thought it would be raised even further if they actually ran it like a circus and people could come and uh, come play, play with the bonobos. 
They're real, t really intelligent and fun, and uh, they're a pleasure to be around. Uh, except for I don't get to be around them as part of my job. I care for the, uh, uh, the deceased. Um, it's a giant population, and a lot of the a lot of them aren't on those uh, um, essentially those underground cargo ships and the rail systems. Um, a lot of them are uh, in permanent uh, underground facilities that uh, they're like biodomes. They're beautiful. Uh, I love it. Um, I'm not allowed to film there, but uh, I will uh, take you a little bit around uh, the facility uh, later. I kind of show off uh, a little bit of the um, the coolness of my work. So yeah, I, so as they as the bonobos pass away, um, they're uh, they're collected and moved through the rail system uh, to one of the nexus hubs, and I work in uh, the main nexus hub of Portland. Um, and my job is to move uh, the bodies uh, into uh, onto slabs essentially, and the slabs get into on a kind of kind of a conveyor system and they're stored, and they're pulled out for study. Um, all sorts of different things happen to them. Um, oh, just like how... Uh, so, I mean, a lot of people are aware that the system exists, um, and I love how it kind of keeps popping up in kind of pop culture, like there'll be an accident on the freeway, and someone will say something like, it's going to smell like bananas here in about 10 minutes. Because um, a lot of the, uh, the underground tunnel systems actually are uh, underneath the... Uh, the, the freeway network of the nation, um, and so like a really big a really big traffic uh, accident actually would get a uh, um, a dispatch of uh, of bonobos to arrive uh, if not directly underneath it if like near um, it's a lot on uh, goes underneath the rail system oddly enough there are rails underneath the rails as well for uh, for national travel. Yeah, so I'll show you. I'll show you a little bit around the uh, the periphery of my work today. I have to go and uh, do an overall check. I have to do a body count. It's a, uh, a corpse sickle uh, uh, count, and uh, I've, you have to do those uh, every six months. And uh, after you count them all, you hand somebody uh, your work, and then they go count them all. Which I always kind of like. It just feels like bull to me. It's like what you doubt the earl. <laughs> You don't think Earl could count? <laughs> and there's the thing too is all the trays are numbered, so like you you in, you instantly could access the system and know how many trays uh, are in the system at the moment, uh, except for they want to see that they want them to know that there is actually a body on the tray. Um, I don't know. I guess sometimes there. I guess the bodies are sold, and there's an idea that like I might I might start selling bonobos corpses to students or something like that or who knows what but this is twice a year we have to check them and I'll get to check them later so I'll take you around all right let's go off to work and uh, thanks for having coffee with me I'm so tired